Hey guys, it's me Allie. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all having a beautiful start to your day. I'm here today with my third BuzzFeed Tasty Recipes Tested type of video. The first two were so much fun to make and this one was just as fun. You guys really seem to be enjoying these videos so that makes me really, really happy. If you like these types of videos, please give this video a thumbs up so I know to do more on my channel. And if you have any BuzzFeed recipes that you would like me to try out, just put them in the comments below. I would love all of your suggestions. If you have any other questions or concerns, just ask them in the comments below. And without further ado, we're going to get right into this video. To make this chocolate stuffed monkey bread, you're going to start off with a block of cream cheese. Take a knife and just cut the cream cheese into tiny little cubes. Then you're going to need some dough. You can either use biscuit dough for this or cinnamon rolls. I'm clearly using cinnamon rolls. Take one of your pieces of dough and then cut it in half and start using your fingers to stretch it out and kind of flatten out your dough pieces. Next, you're going to add in one of those cubes of cream cheese along with a handful of chocolate chips. And then you're just going to enclose the chocolate chips and the cream cheese inside by pushing and squishing all of the edges together and then rolling into your hands until you get a little tiny ball. Complete this process with the rest of your dough halves. If you're using cinnamon rolls, you should get about 16 spheres. Then just take each one of those spheres or those balls, whatever you want to call them, roll them around in some cinnamon sugar, and then place them in a pan. And the final step is to take two tablespoons of butter along with two tablespoons of brown sugar, melt it up, and just drizzle it along the top. Place this in the oven to bake for about 15 to 20 minutes, and when you take it out, it should look something like this. So this is what the final product looks like. It is absolutely beautiful. My house smells amazing right now. And as you can tell, you can just pull it right apart and you have your little chocolate cream cheese stuffed monkey bread pieces. So the first thing I'm gonna do is try to just like rip it apart. Oh, look at that, it came out perfect. The cream cheese is very gooey and the chocolate is very like ooey gooey in there. So this is perfect and now it is time for the taste test. Oh my god, these are amazing. It's everything you would want out of what we just made. That was absolutely incredible. It's very crunchy on the outside and the inside it's very soft and very just like squishy. I know that sounds weird but it's a good kind of squishy because the cream cheese and the chocolate is just meshing really really well together. These are phenomenal. To make these pizza tater tots, we're starting off with some mozzarella sticks and just cutting those into tiny little pieces. And you're also going to take some pepperoni and just cut the pieces in half. Next, you want to make your hash brown mixture, which is just three and a half cups of shredded hash browns, one egg, and all of your seasonings. I chose to use some salt, some onion powder, some garlic powder, some pepper, and some parsley. When you finish adding all the seasonings, you're just going to take a fork and start mixing it all together. Now I noticed that the mixture was a little runny and it was not combining very well, so I added a little bit of flour into the mixture and mixed that all up and I found that it was sticking together a lot easier. Again, this is not part of the BuzzFeed recipe, but I just found that that's what I needed to keep it together. So it's up to you if you want to add that additional step. Then you just want to take a handful of the hash browns, press it down onto your fingers, onto your hands so that you have a flat surface, add in some of the pepperoni and the mozzarella, and then you just want to close it up until you have a tater tot, which was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Mine ended up coming out looking like little mini footballs, but it still works. Once all of your pizza tater tots have been formed, you're going to throw these into the freezer for about 15 to 20 minutes. Once they have been frozen for about 15 to 20 minutes, you just want to throw this into a low heat oil mixture to fry them all up, and you just want to fry them until they're golden brown. And the melted cheese test was an absolute success. As you can tell in that previous clip, the cheese melted perfectly inside and these are really, really hot so I'm just going to dig right in. I'm dipping it in some pizza sauce, that's what makes it very pizza-y. So here we go. I'm trying not to talk with my mofo, but 
These are really, really good. Not as good as I expected them to be. I don't know. It's a lot of potato, so maybe I used a little too much potato. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's pepperoni, it's cheese, it's potatoes, and it's deep fried, so you really cannot go wrong with this, and it's delicious. But I think I expected just a little bit more from this. I don't know. They're darn good. They're just not like over the top amazing. Okay, mug cake attempt number two, here we go. This time I'm starting off with two tablespoons of melted butter and I'm adding in a beaten egg, then I'm taking a fork and just mixing it all together. Then to this mixture I'm adding in two tablespoons of whole milk, not almond milk this time. I'm adding in one tablespoon of vanilla extract and a fourth of a cup of granulated sugar. Taking that same fork and mixing it all up until it is smooth. Next, I'm adding in a fourth of a cup of self-rising flour. I'm also adding in a tablespoon of baking soda and about a tablespoon of salt. Again, taking my fork and mixing it all up until the batter is smooth. Now on to the most important part of this recipe in my personal opinion, the rainbow sprinkles. I'm adding about two tablespoons of rainbow sprinkles into my batter and then just microwaving on high for about a minute and a half. I did it. I'm so proud of myself. Check this mug cake out. If you watched my previous BuzzFeed recipe tested video, I tried the mug cake and I failed miserably. Like that is an understatement. I failed so bad at it and it was an absolute disaster. A lot of you so kindly in the comments let me know how terrible of a job I did on that mug cake and that I should have followed the recipe. I thought I was following the recipe but apparently I was missing some steps so I decided to give it another go in this video and look it's so perfect it's fluffy it looks like cake it's beautiful with all the different funfetti colors i added a little bit of extra sprinkles on top just for aesthetics but i'm so proud of myself so let this be a lesson if you fail at something don't give up try again because this one is a masterpiece and the previous one i did was an epic epic fail taste test time it actually looks like cake this time look it's cake my last one was like sponge. It wasn't even sponge, it was like a rocky sponge. It was just, it was awful. So this looks like cake, it is bouncy, it is fluffy, it's pretty. Let's try it out. It tastes like cake! Oh my gosh, everything. That is everything. I am so proud of myself right now, that is Phenomenal, I love it. Very, very well done, Allison. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now onto the cheese stuffed onion rings, which were the hardest to master out of all the recipes that I tested out in this video. You want to start off with an onion and you want to just cut it into thick slices and then take all the individual pieces and pop them out. Then you want to take a larger onion ring and a smaller onion ring and just place them inside of each other with a little space in between that you can put your cheese. Then I'm just taking a mozzarella stick and I'm just kind of sectioning it inside of those, those blank spaces on my onion ring and I'm just filling in all the extra spaces with some mozzarella cheese. Then I'm going to take this and I'm going to put this in the freezer for about a half hour or until they harden up. When you take these out of the freezer, you're going to dip them into some flour, then into some egg, then into some breadcrumbs, back into the egg mixture, and then back into the breadcrumbs. And then you just want to fry these up. Now my oil was a little too hot. Mine didn't burn, but they just got really, really dark. So I would suggest doing this on a lower heat. So these are massive, they are huge. They look a little burnt on camera. I don't know why it's picking up such a dark color. They're actually really not burnt at all in real life. I think they came out really good. They were super, super easy to make, but the most important thing is how they taste. So we're gonna get into the taste test right now. That is a really good flavor, and the cheese is definitely all oozy, as you can tell right over there. It's oozing right out. The seasoning is so good. Oh my gosh, these are amazing. They're a little messy. I guess that would be my only big downfall, but yeah, look at it. It's like toppling apart now that I bit into it, but oh my god, 
Very, very good. Very, very good, excuse me. Would definitely recommend. And for the final recipe, we are making some ice cream bonbons, and spoiler alert, this one was a fail, but if you want to try it out anyways, all you need to do is take a pan that is lined with some wax paper, throw in a couple of scoops of ice cream, take another sheet of wax paper, press the ice cream down, and then freeze this overnight. The next day you want to take your ice cream mold and just cut them into cubes. Now I would make this again just to eat these ice cream cubes. It changed the texture of the ice cream a little bit and it was just so delicious. So even though this was a fail, I would definitely make these again. Throw these back into the freezer and while those are hardening up, you're going to take some chocolate and throw in about one to two handfuls of Rice Krispies and mix it all up. Finally, you want to take your ice cream cubes, throw them into the chocolate and completely cover them, then place them on a wax piece of paper until they harden up. So I can already tell that these are going to be a fail. Presentation wise, I'm giving them like a one. Taste test wise, I'm hoping it's at least a five. I threw them back in the freezer so that the ice cream can harden up like the recipe said. And they've been in the freezer for a really long time now and the ice cream is just very, very melty. I don't even know how to attack this thing, but here goes nothing. They're good. The ice cream is just like melting out though. There's like a lot of chocolate to ice cream ratio and the ice cream did not harden up like the recipe showed it in the video at all. So these are a fail for me. And that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I hope you're all having a beautiful day and I will talk to you soon. Bye guys.